Why do league players prefer McDermott Q? Because some originals just can't be copied. And we back it all with the boldest warranty in the Q industry that now covers Warpish. All right, episode one of Flipping Cues to Make Money. I got this one on eBay for $170, all in. And it is a nice cue. I always loved this cue whenever I was growing up. It was one I always wanted. And this is a really nice example of one, actually, because it's got a beautiful piece of uh, bird's eye for the forearm. It really is figured. looks really good. Um, the wrap is absolutely filthy. Uh, more things that were wrong with it, though, and I kind of overpaid for it a little bit, I think, is the... the the clear coat's delaminating by the joint. It has a big crack right there, as you can see. I mean, I knew it was going to need a full refinish anyway. Uh, but if you look down here, clear coat is delaminating. I don't think this is the factory bumper, which I'll try to get a, a factory one. Um, then the, the ferrule has a little gap, you know, and it's, it's turned down skinny, which is fine. Everything's able to be fixed. But this is why I think I overpaid a little bit on Put it together and show you what's going on here. Yeah, it's quite crooked. No, God, please, no, no! To say the least. I mean, it's... And we back it all with the boldest warranty in the Q industry that now covers... I mean, we got a lot of work to do on this thing. So I'm pretty sure it's the pin, combination of the pin and the shaft face and uh, the butt face are not quite right. And it also could be there's a couple little uh, things on the wrap that kind of stick out, which would add to it. Wouldn't be the sole reason. But anyway, this is what we're dealing with. Needs a reclear, needs new wrap, needs straightened. Uh, shaft needs a lot of attention, needs a tip, needs deep cleaned, and uh, needs the ferrule matched up. It's got a gap here, and it's you can feel the ferrule quite a lot. So lots to do. Let's get started. All right, so we got this chucked up in the lathe. Just turn the lathe on quick just to check and see if anything's severely out of round or if it's warped like crazy or if there's anything that looks like it's out of whack. Whenever you turn the lathe on, you'll find out real quick. But anyway, if you could, please subscribe. Find your way back for all my content and also to see how this cue ends up and how much I make on it, things like that. And I got all kinds of content on the channel, guys. Please just take a look below and I'll link something in the description and at the end of the video. Anyway. So, what you do is you just nick the end of the linen and you pull it off like so. It's definitely the quickest way to get it off. But what I want you to do also in the comments below, guys, is let me know what you think is making this cue roll so bad. Is it the joint pin? Is it the joint face? Is it the shaft? If it's something in the butt? Let me know what you guys think below and we'll find out moving forward here in a little bit. But, yes, we're getting the linen off and I was actually surprised to see that it had a roasted ash handle um, which is a little strange but then they wrote on here the weight which I thought was kind of neat 19.4 um, you know and the, the cues in rough shape the the clear codes yellowed it's delaminating and unfortunately they cleared over top of the butt cap which I don't think they were supposed to according to McDermott and they clear coated over the stainless steel joint which is also a no-no so somebody did re-clear this cue at some point and they did not do the best job at it so time for us to fix that and get this thing sold so we can make some money so I'm going in here with a 120 grit, grit uh, really good Sia sandpaper and it is stripping this epoxy coating off like crazy white dust flying everywhere don't want that in my lungs so I have to go in with a mask real quick so what I'm doing here is just uh, trying to get through all the clear I'm squaring up the wrap joint with a file um, at the clear it anyway and I'll do this again later on but let me know in the description below should I come back with a white and black spec linen wrap or do you think this cue would uh, do better on the resale market with a leather wrap let me got, let me know what you guys think below all right so what we're going to do is just take a quick look at this thing and let's get some ideas here McDermott EK1 uh, let's take a quick look at this as well um, this might give us a blue book value on this cue Let's find this bad boy on here. I love this era of McDermott's, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but let's see, okay, right here. So, it's saying it should be worth around like three and a quarter, which I think this is outdated. I do think that these cues are going for more than that right now. At least I hope so, because uh, <laughs> I'm gonna need them to go for more than that, because I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have about that in it plus my time. But let's take a look at what we got here. Okay, so like most purists are going to want to see it kind of look like the original, where it's going to have the white with black speck and just a nice clean look. 
Um, but like, look at this one here, for instance. This might be the way to go, and this might be the way to get a little bit more money out of it, and that is to uh, go with, I'll try to zoom in here, with a, with a leather wrap. I think a leather wrap does kind of make this cue kind of stand out a little bit. Let me know what you guys think below, and uh, anyway, let's get back to the re restoration. Um, still going north-south with the sandpaper now to give my sandpaper something grit to, to grab a hold of. If you just keep going in the direction of the lathe, you end up with some deeper scratches and things like that, so I always break it up once in a while and I'll hand sand north-south. Um, still here just trying to figure out, I don't want to go too crazy with that 120 uh, grit, so I'm coming back with some 220 here to see what it's looking like. Um, so, as you can see here, this is a very, very important step. You want to not only make sure you get the clear coat off of, I'm shaking my head because it's up on the, up on the joint, which is a no-no, but you want to get the clear coat off the joint and then you want to use your either sandpaper or a tool post or something along those lines to, uh, you undercut the black ring, white ring, black ring combo right under the stainless. You actually sand that down a few thousandths uh, below what the joint is, and that way your clear coat can build up nice and thick right up to the stainless, and then you can polish out your clear. Then you can use the emery cloth and polishing compound to polish out the stainless when you're done, and that's how you get that nice factory look. Uh, I did go a little bit too nuts with sanding the rings because I did pull a little bit of the stain out of the maple. have to end up probably staining that maple a little bit. Now this is very important as well. Uh, that black ring dust will get down in the maple and make it look like crap. Uh, the, the black points will also mix with the maple, but then the most important thing is down here is ebony wood sleeve with the white inlays. That ebony wood will get down in the pores of those white inlays and just look nasty. So you need to make sure you use your air tool to blow all the dust out of your sandpaper as you're sanding. And it will really, really make a big difference in your finished product. But we're just about done. We got all the clear off. We got everything down to kind of how we want it. Uh, there's no scratches that are in anything that I can see. So we're just about ready to kind of assess it a little bit. I'm going to pull it out of the lathe here in a minute. And I kind of want to go roll it just to kind of see uh, what we're dealing with. Plus, I want to get out of this room. You can see how white it is. It looks like some uh, Canadian wildfires are going on in my basement at the moment. But right now, I'm just checking for scratches and gouges, anything that looks not right. Uh, I did get, just, like I said, a little bit of that stain out of the maple. It, it might be okay, or I might come back with just a little bit of stain and see. I'm uh, going to hit it now with some denatured alcohol just to pull any oils or extra dust and stuff out of the pores of everything. As you can see, I got that joint looking way better. Uh, get this thing cleaned up real nice, especially before I go put it on my table. I got the table all dusty anyway with the dust on my hands and stuff. But anyway, you know, let me know what you think of this video series. You want to see more of this? I actually do have a Muchi that's next in line. And I just think this is something interesting just to, you know, kind of bring you guys some cool content and also maybe make a few bucks along the way. But uh, let me know what you think. And as you can see, just got a piece of uh, tubing over top of the joint pin. Now we're back over on my pull table here. We're going to roll it again. And look, that thing is still And we nasty. back it all with the boldest um, warranty in the queue. So it's definitely not that anything now with like a wrap or the butt or anything along those lines. So in the next episode, I will show you what is making this queue roll so, so bad. But next episode, we're going to do clear, figure out why it's rolling bad, put the wrap on, get it listed. And I'm going to have it sold to give you guys my profit margin. Anyway, thanks for watching. Mulholland Bird channel out. Catch you on the next one.